Hi everyone, I'm Paul Schmutzler, and today I'm going to be looking at some brand new Blackmagic equipment. This is the Blackmagic ATEM 1ME Advanced Panel. It's a mouthful. And then powering that, I have the ATEM Television Studio HD. So, just to be clear, the terms I'm going to be using are the Television Studio back here is the switcher. And then this is the Advanced Panel. So I'll refer to this as Panel, and that as Switcher, if I can keep my terms straight as well. First, let me walk you through the setup of this hardware because it was actually very straightforward and I was surprised because I've worked with hardware like this before that requires a lot of cables and a lot of interactivity and sometimes it can be very difficult to get everything just right. Basically, the panel acts as a network hub. So there's two ethernet ports on the back of the panel and one goes to the computer, the other goes to the television studio switcher. Then on the Mac or if you're on a PC, you can do the same. I set my IP range to a certain range and then I set both of the devices, both the switcher and the panel to the same range, but gave them different numbers at the very end of that range. So basically 50, 51, and 52. Once that was set up, I made the panel search, it finds the television studio, and then in this software, ATEM setup, it also finds the hardware. As you can see, the setup software has already found the television studio HD, the switcher, and it sees the advanced panel. Again, this works simply by seeing an IP range and it searches that and it finds the hardware that it needs. Once you've done that with the setup software, there's not really much you need to do here anymore. You can quickly access settings and jump straight into the software control panel via these buttons down here. So if I hit this button, you can see it's going to switch me over to the software, which I already had running, but it would launch the software for you if needed. And immediately it shows me what I'm seeing on the advanced panel here. It shows what source is on program, what source is on preview, and then any other buttons that are toggled at the time, including the position of the T-bar, which you can see changes as I move the T-bar, the physical T-bar. So the software is mostly straightforward because it's basically just mirroring what you can see physically on the panel. This could be useful if you have maybe two operators in the control room. So you could have one person here setting up graphics or colors, things like that. Uh, um, queuing up media to play or stills to call up. And then the other person could actually be the director who's actually calling the switches and operating the panel itself. That would take some practice because the right hand would have to know what the left hand is doing so that the director doesn't get confused by something the other person that's using the software is setting up. On the right, we have palettes. Here's where you can set up color generators, which I've set up with a blue and an orange. And I'll show you here, I can actually do on screen what I can also do on the hardware. So I would call up color one, which you can see now brings up the blue color, and then I can transition to that if I wanted to show a solid blue, and then I can switch my preview to another camera and go back into my camera feeds having gone through that color. Below that you have upstream and downstream keys. You have transitions, both mix, which is like a dissolve, dip, which you dip to a color, wipe of different shapes, and then DVE. And then the last panel under palettes is fade to black. Here you can adjust the duration of the fade and also tell it whether the audio should follow the video or not. So if you're using fade to black as a cut to commercials or to end the show, then you would want the audio to follow video so that it kills your entire feed all at once. If you don't want it, if you just want black to be available to you as an option for an actual image, but you want the audio to continue, let's say you're trying to hide something visually, whatever that may be, you can toggle that on or off for whatever you need. The next tab over media players shows you what stills are called up. You can quickly change to other stills that you have loaded, as you can see, up to 20 in each media player. And then there's Hyperdex. If you have a Blackmagic Hyperdex, this would be for recording. And under Capture is where you would see those devices showing up. So at the bottom, you can see there's four main screens to the software control. The left is switcher view, media is next, then audio, and then camera. We'll go through these in order. I'll also point out that if you've used DaVinci Resolve, you'll notice that the way this software is laid out and designed, especially with these buttons on the bottom, it's very similar to DaVinci Resolve because on the left you have your ingest panel in Resolve, and then it goes to editing, color, audio, and then output. This is done in a similar way. Switcher screen is first. Media is your next screen, and here's where you can navigate through your hard drive and choose stills to be shown in, the, in those media players. And then as we saw before, you can assign images to either media player. And we'll get more into that later when we get to the panel hardware. 
Then you have an audio tab, which is pretty straightforward. It shows you the audio that's coming in through each camera or audio source. In my case, the only camera that has a microphone is the Ursa Pro, and it has uh, a built-in shotgun mic that's just picking up Nat sound, so that's just my voice you're seeing there on the levels. And then in the camera panel, this is where things get really cool with using Blackmagic cameras with their entire ecosystem of hardware here. Because number five is my Ursa camera. You'll notice that it has gain here, and I have this set up to where I can control that camera from this software. So if I adjust the gain, you'll notice on screen it gets brighter or darker. I can also adjust the shutter speed, the color temperature, and then here with this dial I can adjust um, a combination of exposure. If I was using something with a powered lens, like a B4 lens, I could also zoom. And then if I need a more granular view for, say, adjusting the color to shade my cameras, I can hit this button to make everything larger and get really down into the nitty gritty of the color balance of the camera. Under settings here, the gear icon at the bottom left, you have general preferences for the software, but this also controls your entire program. How are you recording? In my case, I went for an unusual frame rate for us in the US. Uh, interlaced 50 frame format, it is 1080. And then under audio, you can set whether audio follows video as a, as a master setting. Multi-view is also very cool. You can see with this small HD 2400 series monitor, I have a multi-view set up with my program on top, preview on the bottom, and then all my camera views on the right stacked. Not only can I select which cameras are displayed here, but I can choose where they're displayed. So I'm actually using inputs five and six Number five is the Ursa camera. Number six is this box cam here. Number five and six are normally down here. Well, I knew that that wasn't gonna be very visible. So all I had to do was in the software, use this drop down menu, and I could choose exactly what showed up in each box on screen. So I made my Ursa top left, PTZ optics top right, and there we go, they're easy to see at the top. The other thing you can do is assign, for example, we'll make number three here, our media player. And number four, media player number two. And there we go. So now I can see all four of the sources I have available right now on screen at the top exactly where I want them. And not only that, you can see on screen it creates, it puts the name on screen. So the OSD is very nice because you can be very confident that what you're selecting is what you want. If you have all the same cameras, then you would want to number them or do something else accordingly. Under labels, here's where I created those custom names. And if I wanted to do that with the media players, I would go under the media tab and just rename those. So we call this BMD micro. And then I would save it. And as you can see on screen, it just updated and shows BMD micro there for media player one instead. Of course, you can leave them as the defaults or you can change them to something custom. Going back to the settings real quick, HyperDex is where, again, you would find your HyperDeck controls if you had one. And then I also wanna point out that the television studio does support both the control via SDI for the Blackmagic cameras, but it also supports VSCA protocols. And that's very important if you have, say, a, another brand of a PTZ camera, because most PTZ cameras have that multi-pin, I believe it's an HD15 connector, so that you can control older cameras as well without having to use a separate controller for that single camera or having to use a remote control that may not be very effective. And the way you do that with the hardware here is with this joystick. So that's the software. Now let's take a look at the Television Studio HD a little bit. The Television Studio is a very small rack mountable piece of equipment. Um, it's chock full of features. Mostly, most of them are on the back with your inputs and outputs. But on the front, as you can see, we have hardware buttons to select the source that we want to display. You have audio follow video toggle buttons to where you can have that on or off depending on what you need for each camera source. And then you have a couple of buttons here that are also replicated on the advanced panel. Fade to black, your media players, and then whether you want to cut to a, the preview or do an auto fade or transition to the preview. And then you have a menu button to change settings here, which are much more easily done on the software, I'll say, because this is a tiny screen with a tiny button that can be hard to navigate. And then you have a set to select in your menu there. Now, moving to the star of the show, the advanced panel. This is where all the action is going to happen. If you're operating this as a director, this is the most important piece that you need to have. Okay, so a lot of this we've already seen on the software, but I want to show you also how you don't have to use gaffer tape on this to tell you what camera is what. The advanced panel has screens that are above and below, respectively, the program and the preview line of buttons. 
So cameras one, two, and three, and four, I'm not using. Those are HDMI inputs. So I didn't assign those to anything. But as you can see, the names that I assign in the software have shown up for the two cameras, the Ursa Pro for number five and the PTZ Optics for number six. Of course, I can infer in this case what numbers they are because I have four and seven on either side. But if you needed to, you could include that number with your naming so the numbers stay there in case you need to call out something by a number. So on the lower level, besides the preview and program buttons you have here, you have a selection of transitions. Mix, of course, being like a dissolve. Wipe would be a shape wipe. Uh, dip would be dip to a color. When you change the white, you can see that the screen up here actually changes. So it now shows you the rate, which of course is the time that it takes to make that transition, and then the pattern. The time only applies if you use the auto button. It's gonna automatically take one second in this case to make that change. Now that's kind of a slow way to go about it, but in a pinch you can do that. The best way is to go back to your software, go to the transitions panel, switch to, in our case, wipe, and then choose the, the uh, shape here. So we can do a corner transition and it immediately change, changes on screen. And then the auto button, you can see it uses that transition for the next time you switch. Then you can quickly change to a different one and make it wipe the other way if you want. I'll go back to a circle and transition back to that camera view. Moving up to the top row of buttons here, you have a series of soft buttons along the top above the screen, which will be enabled whenever there's something on the menu up here. On the right, you have a number pad, which is good for quickly entering values, especially for like the IP address range. Uh, you can also use these dials here, but sometimes it's faster and more precise just to punch the number in directly. And then you have a joystick, and this is used for camera control, specifically if you have a PTZ camera using that Visca protocol, you can use this joystick to operate the camera. It twists to zoom and then uh, moves, of course, left, right, up, and down to control the pan and tilt. On the left, you can easily access the menus for most of what you can do down here, including your transitions, mix, wipe, DVE, dip. Uh, and then you also have your keyers for doing any kind of a chroma key or luma key. And then you have settings for master settings for the panel. Uh, you have camera control, which would be where you get to uh, change settings for either the Blackmagic camera control or Visca. And then you have audio and macros. Macros, of course, would be if I want to pre-record a series of switches at different rates with different transitions, I can go into macro, hit record, record that, and then call that back up at any time and have it executed automatically on the advanced panel. And here's where you can change the color of what cameras are. And the last thing I want to show you is how you can use the media players. While number one is in preview, I can go to media players here on the panel or in the software and do the same thing, but I'm going to show you on the panel. And I can use this dial right here to change to a different still. And it shows me not only the file name, but a preview, of course, immediately on screen when I switch to that different image. So it's great that you have the option to be able to change your graphics up here on the panel. But in a lot of cases, it's easier to do it on the software. And one of the reasons for that is in the software, you can see all the thumbnails at once for what you have available. And if you need to call something else up, you can do that here. Until you have it in your stills here on the software, you don't have them available to you on the panel itself. So you, again, this is a case where having two people would be helpful because the second person on the computer could be putting the images in the stills, changing them out, whatever needs to be done while the director just concentrates on operating the panel and running the show. So that's an introduction and an overview of the Blackmagic ATEM 1ME Advanced Panel and the Television Studio HD. My opinion of the Advanced Panel is that it's accessible enough for rookies to not be intimidating, but it's also advanced and customizable enough for even veteran directors.